Okay, so on Friday we talked about slope fields. And the purpose of a slope field is to be able to estimate the solution to a differential equation that is impossible to solve or that you don't know how to solve at this point. And the very first one that we used on the notes was dy dx equals x plus y. So I'm going to stick with that same differential equation, and, but we're going to look at it a little bit different way. We're going to look at it from a numerical approach as opposed to a graphical approach. And this is called Euler's method. The basic idea behind slope fields can be used to find numerical approximations to solutions of the differential equations. Now, this differential equation tells us that y prime of 0 or the derivative at the point 0 comma 1 would equal, plug in the 0 for x, plug in the 1 for y, so it would equal 1. Meaning that the solution curve has a slope of 1 at the point 0 comma 1. So the derivative at that point is 1. So it's basically saying that at the point 0, 1, we have a slope of 1. All right, so what I want to do is I want to write a linear approximation to the solution curve. So basically, I want to write the equation of a line that close to that point of tangency will approximate that solution curve, or the equation of the tangent line. So using a slope of 1 and the point 0, comma 1, the equation of that line would be y minus 1 equals 1 times x minus 0, or y equals x plus 1. And you can see that this, the solution curve, even though we're unable to solve even though we're unable to solve this differential equation by other means, I found graphically what that solution curve looks like. And then I've drawn in this tangent line right here. So close to the point of tangency at 0, 1, that tangent line has close to the same y values as the solution curve. All right, so if I wanted to approximate, say, y of 0.1, I could use the tangent line, and the y values are very close at that point. Okay, the problem is, is when you get further and further and further away from that point of tangency, your estimate becomes less accurate. So Euler had an idea to improve upon this approximation by proceeding only a short distance along this tangent line and then making mid-course correction by changing the direction as indicated by the slope. So what he decided to do is I'm going to use this tangent line for just a little while and then I'm going to take this point and I'm going to reevaluate that at using the slope right here so that I kind of have a better, <laughs> if I could draw a straight line, have a better approximation. And then I'm going to move a little bit further, and then I'm going to use that point and go back here and use the slope of the tangent line, or slope of the solution curve, so that I'm kind of, I'm following that curve better. Okay, so the horizontal distance traveled is called the step size h, and we'll come back to that in just a second. All right, so the original tangent line was y equals x plus 1. And what I want to do is I want to stop that tangent line where x is 0.5. And then I'm going to write a new linear approximation starting at x equals 0.5. So for that old tangent line of y equals x plus 1, how could I find the y value right here? Good. So y would equal 0.5, plugging in 0.5 for x plus 1, or 1.5. So I have the point 0.5 comma 1.5. And then I want to go back to my differential equation and using that slope, I want to find the slope at the point 0.5 comma 1. Well, what was the formula for the slope or for dy dx? x plus y. So dy dx or m would equal 2. So my new line, I'm going to use the slope of 2 and the point 0.5 comma 1.5. So y minus 1.5 equals 2 times x minus 0.5. And normally I don't make you solve for y, but because we're going to keep using 
each line to write the next one, I'm going to go ahead and solve for y. So if I distribute this 2 and add 1.5 to both sides, we're going to cheat, and I'm going to tell you that it's y equals 2x plus 0.5. And I'm going to call that line y1. Yes, Harry. You are getting further and further and further from the line, but had I continued on the path of this original tangent line, I'm at least closer by doing it this method. Very good. The smaller that your step size h is, the better your approximation is going to be. Okay, so we're going to find one more linear approximation starting at x equal 1. All right, so now I'm on this line, y1 equals 2x plus 0.5. So when x is 1, what's the y value? 2.5. Because this point where x is 1 is at the end of that line, y equals 2x plus 0.5. So if I plug in a 1 for that. Okay, so my point now is 1 comma 2.5. And using the slope or the differential equation, what would the slope be? 3.5. So y minus 2.5 equals 3.5 times x minus 1. If you were to solve for y, then you would get y equals 3.5x minus 1, I think. Yes. Okay. So where this becomes useful is let's say I wanted to make an approximation of, of the actual solution curve. I wanted to know the y value of the actual solution curve when x is, say, 1.1. So I would, because 1.1 is really close to this third line that I drew, and I can even call that y2. So it's going to go up like that, or maybe even more like that. Then if I wanted to find y of 1.1, then I would use this y2 approximation line. Okay, now. The good news is that Euler discovered a method for doing this where I don't have to write the equation of the line each time. So you can kind of just go through it. There are several steps to it, but you don't have to write the equation of the line each time. But I think that that kind of shows a good visual of what's going on. Okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to prove to you the formula that, or that Euler figured out. Now, I'm not going to test you on this, but I think that most of you can follow this, and it will prob the formula will make more sense if I explain why the formula is the way it is, as opposed to just telling you this is the formula. Okay, so usually we're just interested in one specific y value, and so therefore, I don't want to write the equations of all of those tangent lines. So every time we do Euler's method, you're going to be given three things you are going to be given an initial value. And I'm going to call that x naught, y naught. Or we can think of it as the starting point. Okay, you're also going to be given the differential equation. So dy dx equals some equation, usually in terms of x's and y's. So that's why I'm going to call it f of x comma y. And I'm going to use x naught and y naught just because that's going to be my starting point. And then the last thing you're going to be given is the step size. So how far they want you to go before you change directions. And for some reason, they've let that step size equal h, or h is the variable that you go. Okay, so we're starting with x naught, y naught, which is right here. Now my goal 
is to get to this y value right here. Okay, I want to find out what this y value is here. So y1 is basically going to equal y0 plus some change in y. Okay, so we're starting at y0, and I want to get up to y1, so I'm to take the starting point and go up some change in y. Y'all cool with that? Okay, let's figure out in terms of this graph what the change in y would be. You could kind of use the Pythagorean theorem, or let's, because we're talking about differential equations and that represents slope, let's use the slope. Slope is rise over run, right? Okay, so if I wanted to get to my, if I wanted to get to my change in y, then what I could do is I could take my slope, which is delta y over delta x, and multiply it times what? If I just want to get, if I just want to end up with a change in y, then I need to take the slope times by h, your step size, or your change in x, because h is how far you go over x. Yeah, I crossed, sorry, I crossed out the original delta y. So delta y is really the same thing as your slope, or delta y over de delta x times h. Okay, right, right. So we would have y naught plus the equation of your slope at the point x naught y naught and then times your step size of h. Okay, now let's say we want to take off and find a y2 up here. To go to y2, we would do the exact same thing, but what y value would we start at? Good, at y1, and then we would want to know the slope. We would use the slope from the line of y1, so the slope at the point x1, y1, and then times h. Because you always want to, every time you change directions, you want to use the slope at that new point. And this would continue on in a pattern forever and ever and ever. And if you go down to the bottom of this page, then that's the formula for Euler's method. And this is the way that you would see, so the formula in general is that for any point y, it's going to equal the previous y value plus the step size times the slope at the previous point. And that's kind of the way that I remember this formula. So if you're looking for y sub n, then y sub n minus 1 is the previous y value, h is the step size, and then f of x sub n minus 1 plus, comma y sub n minus 1 is the slope at the previous point. Okay, so previous y value plus step size times previous slope. That's what you need to know.